The Starship Super Heavy SpaceX in development rocket designed to send the first humans to Mars is getting more powerful and bolder than ever before. Starship payload is 250 to 300 tons to orbit in expendable mode. Improved thrust and ISP from Raptor will enable around 6,000 tons of liftoff mass. That's how SpaceX CEO Elon Musk was responding to a Twitter user looking to compare Starship with the Soviet N1. Well, this can make Starship an unparalleled cargo behemoth in space, revolutionizing space travel with its impressive payload capabilities. To comprehend the scale of this accomplishment, one can envision that the cargo capacity of the Starship is equivalent to that of 118 tons of Saturn V in orbit and about 12 shuttle payloads. Do you remember when it took almost 60 space shuttle launches to bring up the 40 pieces of the 420-ton International Space Station? Well, in this case, two single-use SpaceX Super Heavy Starships could be left in space and bring more mass for a larger 500-ton space station. It'd be best to use at least three SpaceX Super Heavy Starships to orbit. This will enable a central docking component and then two rotating Starship modules. The SpaceX Starships could just be left in orbit, but attached with walkways to form an almost 1,230-ton space station. Each of the starships would have about 160 tons of dry mass and a 300-ton payload. Yeah, believe it or not, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable starships. Ship 26 and 27 will feature no thermal protection, have no heat or shield tiles, and won't be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. These starships will be able to test technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the moon revolves around a depot ship variant that'll store propellant in orbit and can't return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. Hopefully, if it's possible, we'll see the S-26 or S-27 fly this year to demonstrate these capabilities. And one day, Starship will change humanity soon with this ability. Back in the 1980s, the exorbitant cost of carrying just one kilogram to space in a large rocket was more than $75,000. The expense of transporting just a single astronaut's body reached an astronomical sum of over $5 million. However, thanks to SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, this scenario has drastically changed. Falcon Heavies reduced the cost to $1,500 per kilogram, making space transportation 50 times cheaper. The key to this remarkable achievement lies in SpaceX's larger, reusable rockets, which have brought about this awesome transformation. Now, as the baton passes to SpaceX's Starship rocket, we can expect even better advancements. Starship is designed to carry over 100 tons of payload to low Earth orbit or LEO, surpassing the latest Falcon Heavy's capacity by 50%. With plans for thousands of launches every year, Elon Musk envisions a significant cost reduction in the near future. Musk believes that within two or three years, the cost per kilogram will drop from Falcon Heavy's $1,500 to a mere $100. When we hit that point, the value of affordable transportation becomes a topic worth exploring. This concept is intricately linked to the cost of different types of transportation on Earth. It's no coincidence that the U.S. and Europe, both regions known for their extensive and well-connected inland waterways, are among the wealthiest in the world. Why does this matter, though? The significance lies in the fact that transportation costs over water are considerably lower than those on land. Moreover, navigation through inland waterways offers even more advantages compared to sea transportation. The value of rivers becomes apparent when observing a country like France, where the population density closely aligns with the river systems. Cheap transportation provided by rivers has attracted both people and wealth, particularly to the confluence points where rivers meet. Why did people gather around rivers? Consider a scenario where you sell meat, and for each kilogram sold, you make a profit of $10. However, the transportation cost for each kilogram over a one kilometer distance is $1. With this cost in mind, you can only transport your product up to 10 kilometers away. Now, if the transportation cost is cut in half, something special happens. The cost becomes 50 cents a kilometer. Suddenly, your profits go up in each city that was previously within your trading reach. More importantly, you can now access markets that are 20 kilometers away. And when you double the distance, you quadruple the potential trade surface. In this scenario, you're not limited to training with just four cities. Instead, you can trade with 16. According to Metcalfe's law, the value of a network grows exponentially with the square of its nodes. Here, it's not just your city that can connect to these 16 other cities. Each of these cities can now connect with 16 additional cities as well. As a result, prosperity spreads, allowing for increased meat consumption and economic growth. This is precisely what rivers accomplish. By reducing the cost of transportation, rivers connect numerous cities, enabling enhanced trade and increasing wealth. This cycle of increased wealth leads to higher purchasing power, 
which in turn fuels further economic growth. Ultimately, the value generated by the network with cheaper transport is at least an order of magnitude higher than that without it. Cheaper transportation facilitates more trade at a lesser cost, generating wealth that can be reinvested in improving infrastructure like canals, bridges, and roads. This, in turn, fuels further growth in the area. Throughout history, transportation costs have played a pivotal role in shaping empires and civilizations. The economic implications of affordable transport have been evident in these regions. For instance, Rome prospered due to the Mediterranean's accessibility and invested an extensive network of roads to reduce overland transportation costs. However, their empire was held back by the limitations of their communication system. The significance of transportation costs cannot be overstated. They have been instrumental in driving the expansion of empires. Now, with the advent of SpaceX's Starship, transportation costs are poised to redefine our reach and potential, extending beyond our planet to new worlds. Starship's like a conveyor belt to low Earth orbit. When you drop your transportation costs by a hundred times in a decade, a whole universe of opportunities opens up so fast that our human brains can't even follow it. That's right. Like the authors of a 2021 white paper of the Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey write, the SpaceX Starship system fundamentally changes the paradigm for NASA science, technology development and testing, and human exploration of space. Launching a large telescope in space can cost more than $100 million and reducing that price by two orders of magnitude will have a huge impact on remote sensing, says Walid Abdelladi, director of the Cooperative Institute for Research and Environmental Sciences at the University of Boulder, Colorado. Depositing payloads of telescopes and satellites into orbit will help climate science in two ways, he says. First, by restocking devices that typically have a three to five year lifespan, Starship could create a cheaper way to carry out sustained observations of the planet. Second, it could enable more ambitious scientific missions as part of the Earth System Explorer program, which capped each one's cost at $350 million. If your launch vehicle eats up $60 million of that $350 million or more, you're down to a pretty significant limit of resources for your actual mission, Walid says. If Starship can lower that launch cost, there's more that can be directed towards the science mission itself. Astronomers have similar hopes. At least one proposed next-generation NASA telescope has already been vetted by SpaceX for a potential future Starship launch. Depositing payloads and reclaiming others in orbit is an added perk to Starship's slated goal, which is ferrying cargo, and eventually cruise to the Moon and Mars. According to the white paper, whose author list includes researchers affiliated with both NASA and SpaceX, the company currently plans to launch multiple uncrewed Starship missions to Mars every two years, each time exploiting a planetary alignment particularly favorable for the voyage. Without a crew, the authors say, there's a great potential to unload cargo on Mars as well as bring back samples from the planet. And similar opportunities exist for our transport to and from the Earth's moon. In this regard especially, Starship's sheer size is a big asset. Because Starship can return tons of payload from the surface of the moon, the return sample mass of lunar samples from a single mission would dwarf the combined total return mass of all lunar samples from all sample return missions today. And that just about wraps up today's episode. We hope you share your ideas and comments in the section below, because your support makes us want to make more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye.